Brad Brookfield here. Um, welcome to episode three in series two of the Blues Show. So this is where we take, um, you know, really cool ideas from Clapton and Steve Ray Vaughan and other blues guitar players that we like and explore them around the neck. Instead of learning a whole solo, note for note, we're just taking some of the little golden nuggets and uh, really exploring them around the fretboard, hoping that it's going to um, help our vocabulary, give us new ideas and uh, get our blues playing kind of flowing. So uh, today what we're going to do is I thought I'd check out a Blues Breakers lick uh, because I don't think we've done one of those uh, yet in this series. And we're going to do a Stevie Ray Vaughan one as well from uh, Pride and Joy in a bit. So uh, let's check out this uh, Clapton one. It's from All Your Love and it comes in at 2 minutes and 8 seconds. Um, he basically... It's the, basically the last lick he plays on his guitar solo. So he goes... So let's try that there. I'm going to do it again slowly. So it starts at the 20th fret. So I'm thinking of that as he's bending the flattened third, coming back to the flattened third, flattened third, root, bending up to the root, and then and he's ending on the flattened third there as well. So what's really cool about that lick is he starts on the flattened third and he ends on the flattened third. So um, now, uh, I'll play that one more time slow. Um, we like to take all these things into the key of C and then we play them through the cage position and see what they sound like. Sometimes they're kind of cool to play, sometimes they're a little bit awkward. But you can pretty much guarantee you're, you're really exploring uh, the lick and by the time you've done that, You've got it right in your ear and you, you're definitely uh, better off for it. And it will inspire kind of riffs to write songs or just to areas to play in while you're improvising and that. So here we go. Uh, so in the key of C. Well, I'll do that again. And again. Super slow motion. So I love that lick. You know, it's really kind of classic from that era, that, you know, that Beano era kind of Clapton. Um, so... That's in the E form, isn't it? So what would it sound like if we went, say, down here to, in the key of C to the A form? So like, I know it starts on the flat and third, so. So that's kind of helping, that's a kind of a cool because it's good I wouldn't normally think to play that and it's nice in that position to be thinking about bending that first finger so so I like that that's got a really nice kind of vibe about it. Let's take it into the, the G form. So this is going to... <laughs> so I'm kind of relying half on... I did play through these beforehand, obviously. Um, but I'm kind of relying on uh, a few uh, things here where it's my knowledge of intervals 
and there's a kind of an instinct. My fingers kind of know where to go because I've you know worked a lot in the pentatonic. But definitely knowing your intervals, the fact that it starts on the flat and three, and you bend in the flat seven. So. So one more time. So that's cool, I like that. And then we're back into the E form. So, so far we've got. That's slightly weird, but it's cool. Cool, now we're into the key, uh, the D form here. So we're gonna be bending the flat three so we could do it here. Yeah, like that. You know, it'd be a cool way to end the song, wouldn't it? Whoops. <laughs> but still, sounds good. And then we've got the C form here. That's nice. So, you know, you that's a you know, a really nice lick. And again, taking it through those different positions, please use the cog at the bottom uh, corner of the screen on YouTube to slow these things down and, uh, and explore them. But, you know, for me, what that's kind of given me, uh, just taking that lick around is, instead of starting on the root, starting on the, uh, the flat and third, or even you can visualize that Jimi Hendrix chord. on that bent kind of flat and dead. Cool. Okay, let's check out the Steve Ray Vaughan uh, lick we're going to do this week. I thought it would be cool to use something from Pride and Joy because most people are pretty familiar with that. You don't have to go digging too deep to find that track, do you? And at 3 minutes and 24 seconds in, he does this lick. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like a turnaround lick. And obviously it'd be down tuned the semitone, but um, you know, this is in the key of E if we're just playing it in standard. So it starts off with this. Sometimes they go hit the you know the, the the root down the octave there. Now what's interesting about that is I, I like the way he hammers into the knife. He hammers into it and he pulls off from it. And that really helps with the turnaround because that note. Uh, when you hit the ninth, it's it's a note that's in the chord of the five chord. So, so it's it's helping him kind of outline the changes a little bit, you know. So. So I look, that's a, another really cool lick. So let's play that in the key of C and see what happens. Now. This is kind of like a good reason what, for people 
Um, if you're looking for an excuse not to kind of take things around the cycle of uh, five or play them in different positions, this would be a classic kind of like excuse not to kind of, um, or a reason not to. I, don't, I think excuse is a bit of a strong word. It's, you know, it's very difficult taking these kind of standard uh, fingerings that work so well in, in one position. And it's not going to work as easy in a different position, but it can inspire so uh, a, a deeper knowledge of, of where good phrasing is in different positions. So it might not flow out the fingers as easy, but you might just pick up the odd little kind of uh, cool fingering and phrasing in a position you wouldn't, you normally can't think of anything to play in. So anyway, let's try it in the key of C. So we're going to be here on the um, at the eighth fret. <laughs> So that's cool, isn't it? And you, there's a kind of a, a technique to this where you've kind of really got to give it some kind of rhythmical kind of drive uh, when you're playing. There's an illusion that Steve Ray Vaughan is hitting the strings really hard, but he is still skimming the strings, you know. He's not hitting them full force, you know, so he's going... <laughs> So I'm just skimming the strings there, you know, and I'm trying to put down some good, accurate um, articulation of the notes with my fingertips. So if we take that lick into the A form, that's going to be pretty crazy. Now, this is hard, so you'll have to bear with me here. So what I do know is we're bending the fourth up to the fifth, and then we're playing the root and the fifth. So that's the classic Chuck Berry thing, but... How would you play the classic Chuck Berry thing in this position? Well, you could go... So, and that, for me, I really like that. It kind of inspires some kind of ZZ Top style kind of riffing, doesn't it? those kind of uh, ZZ Top style kind of low riffs and, and then when you go up high it sounds more effective. So um, now there's no way of kind of doing that hammer on to the nine so we have to jump up. So all together. But I mean, if you just take fragments out of it like that, that's kind of enough. The second part of the phrase, uh, it's kind of cool, isn't it? Even if you just got that out of it, and then that last bit. You've got these cool double stops. So there are options for kind of like riffing and getting that kind of, uh, again, like I, I said, ZZ Top inspired, but you know. easy top that but you can hear there's a riff there isn't there you know so inspired by a Steve Ray Vaughan lick let's have a look in the G form here so um, so we're bending the force we've got this so it's giving you some kind of cool ideas. I'll play that really slow, will I? So again, the 
this kind of idea. So You can uh, practice jamming around with that and getting some no nice low grooves. Um, and let's go up, and this is our standard one, isn't it? <laughs> and if you only learn it in that position, <laughs> that's enough, that's kind of cool, isn't it? Okay, let's go over to the D form and let's see what kind of happens here. So if we bend. So you, I mean, I would never think of going, but it's cool. So again, okay, let's go up to the C form now. So we've got this. So you can see, that's like the Jimi Hendrix chord on C. So... So I'd have to practice them myself a good bit to uh, get them to a place where I could confidently use them, but this is me exploring, looking for real inspiration uh, in licks. And by taking them through those five positions like that, um, it really gets into your ear. You're not going to forget that lick in a hurry. And it's the same with the Clapton one and that. So it's, um, it's hard work. Like I would see this, this lesson as a pretty advanced one, you know, because you have to think pretty hard about, you know, bending the notes um, but like connecting the ideas. just recall it because I've, I've practiced it you know what I mean uh, it's kind of in my head I can kind of sing it so I hope you had a bit of fun with that and uh, please let me know if you're kind of digging these and um, I would you know this is a pretty advanced lesson so even if you just take a few ideas or even if the lick has kind of sunk into your ear uh, a good bit more just for kind of watching and maybe playing along with this video. It's not really about mastering every um, every video that kind of comes along once a week with this kind of blues show. It's really about, you know, opening a, a discussion and like, what did it, what did you find in this lick? Did you find a way to uh, un incorporate it yourself? So um, hope you have fun with that and uh, keep it burning out there and see you on the next one.